Well, good morning, Lionhearts. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion, and we are on the road. We are leaving Tennessee, headed for Kentucky. I want to hit Frankfurt Cemetery. There's someone there. Pivotal to my childhood that I would like to go visit. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. And oh yeah, aside from going out to visit the great Miss Elizabeth, some call her the first woman of wrestling, also in that same cemetery is frontiersman Daniel Boone. So we'll stop and see him too. You know, I'm half tempted to stop off in Lexington and visit Ernest P. Worrell, Jim Varney. We'll see. Probably save that for another day. Well, that's hard to miss. Welcome to Kentucky. All right, we've hit that Kentucky rain. The old Kentucky rain. So you can see these red lines are passing through Corbin, Kentucky, which is the home of KFC and the KFC Museum, Colonel Sanders. All right, the sign says Frankfurt, so we're about half an hour away. Well, we've arrived at the Frankfurt Cemetery. There are a lot of legislators and a lot of famous politicians, generals, war people, and of course, Daniel Boone and the lovely Miss Elizabeth Hewlett. Let's go find her. All right, unfortunately, the information center's closed, so we're on our own finding her. I hope it's easy. All right, so this is what I have to go off of. I'm hoping to find those two black kind of markers behind her as a reference. So have no fear, Miss Elizabeth, we will find you. But take a look at the view. It is exactly what she deserves for eternity. You can see over the whole city from up here. Pretty great view. This was her city. She grew up in Frankfurt. She was from Kentucky. She, her father abandoned them when she was young and she was raised by her mother, just her, her brother and her mother. They were pretty poor, but she just had this great lovable charisma about her and was raised with a good upbringing and always called her mother, mother, and was just so lovable. I didn't find her, but right where I had just decided to stop and film that, I just noticed there's another Hewlett here. That very well could have been her grandparents. Now I certainly do appreciate that they have this here, but I do wish they had one for Miss Elizabeth. I wonder if that giant statue up there is Daniel Boone. We're finding her first, sorry, Daniel, if that is you. You know me, I'm just a fan of cemeteries. This one's a little bit too big to walk, plus it's pretty muggy out here pretty humid but I love taking a look at these kind of buildings on the property too and this I don't think she's over here because these are clearly much older but I love taking a look at great cemeteries I know kind of crazy that way isn't that interesting you know, a little bit ago I said, oh, I think we found maybe her grandpa. Who knows? As I've been driving by, I've seen quite a few Hewlett's, so it's a good thing that I told you I'm looking for those two black markers behind her because, yeah, you can't just go by that name. There's a lot of them around here. I know, I know, I know, I see it, Daniel Boone, but I want to see Miss Elizabeth first. See, I thought I found it at first, but it's not here. It's actually over here because I did find those headstones I was looking for. See from right over here you can see that black one and then the one kind of hiding behind here. She's right here. Sweet Miss Elizabeth. So sad. 
just 42 years old. Elizabeth Ann Hewlett rose to fame when she met the Macho Man Randy Savage. She was actually working in a gym and he came in to work out early one morning. Walked up to talk to her and she said, you have the reddest eyes I've ever seen. And he said, you ought to see them from the other side. And they started dating. Now she did say he was a little rough to fall in love with right away because he always used to joke and say it was love at first sight for her but uh, but she said it was a little tough to deal with and as you could see with his character on WWF that was actually who he really was see the gimmick was so believable on TV because that's actually the way their relationship was in real life so they immediately started going out and Randy got Elizabeth a job with his father's wrestling promotion, ICW, as a ring announcer and kind of doing commentary. And then when Randy, six months later, got an offer to go to WWF, he wanted to take Elizabeth with him on the road. He was always, everyone says, just very paranoid, uh, just didn't want her to be out of his sight, didn't want her to be around the boys or anything. So he ended up getting her a job with WWF. Now, how they did it was, when Randy came in, they were, the way they introduced him was basically that all the managers in wrestling were fighting over Randy Savage. And when it came time for him to decide who he was going to go with, he introduced that he was going to have Miss Elizabeth as his manager. Now, no one knew anything about her and people just instantly fell in love with her. You have to remember that in this time, this was really when wrestling was becoming big time. It had all been territories and Vince McMahon was starting to buy up all the big talent and was building WWF at the time. And Macho Man was part of that. He had a great gimmick to begin with. And originally I guess the idea was for Elizabeth to be kind of mean and everything the way that valets and, and managers had always been, the way women had been used in wrestling before. If they weren't wrestling themselves, then they were always kind of working with a heel, like a bad guy, and they were always a bad person, but Elizabeth was different. Randy always barked at her and, and, and like told her what to do and pointed and said, stand here. In this day and age, you, if you saw someone doing that, you, you probably wouldn't, like they probably wouldn't do that as a gimmick now even, but it was kind of genius for the day because it made people dislike Randy, but that made them love her more. And you always kind of hung around just to see, you know, why she liked him so much, why she put up with so much. But they were inseparable. Two years after they met, they were married in real life. They didn't portray the marriage until 1992 during a pay-per-view, but they actually were married two years after they met. Now what was great was that they were smart about the way that they used her when they had Randy in feuds. They always made Elizabeth the good guy, no matter what Randy was doing. And it was a weird dynamic because this was, Randy would often grab her and, and put her in front of him as like a shield to stop someone from doing something. But in real life, Randy was so protective of her that they said if Randy was doing anything in the building and Elizabeth wasn't going to be with him, he would lock her in the locker room in the dressing room because apparently the other wrestlers were pretty brutal when it came to jokes and Randy didn't want her being around it he, it was his wife he thought that they were very disrespectful they said that you know if you fell asleep around some of the guys they would cut your hair they would use your suitcase as a bathroom lots of joking and ribbing and horseplay and he just didn't like it and in fact one of the wrestlers actually was standing in front of Elizabeth one time and farted and Randy lost his mind and ended up uh, complaining to Vince McMahon and getting that wrestler a $7,000 fine. Now behind the scenes, Elizabeth just wasn't happy. And when Randy would leave town sometimes without her, he would actually go out and buy 
TV dinners, a specific number of TV dinners to account for every day that he would be gone and every meal that he would be gone because he didn't want her leaving the house. So eventually she got fed up with this and she had become friends with Linda Hogan. Linda Hogan was the only person that was out traveling with any of the um, wrestling shows at the time because she was married to Hulk Hogan. And Linda and Elizabeth found out they had a lot in common. They became friends and Linda had had you know, two children and Elizabeth liked to be around them and liked to help with them. And so one day she called Linda and found out that they were in Miami because Hulk was filming Mr. Nanny. And Miss Elizabeth asked to, well, some of the stories are that she asked Randy if she could go down there and he said she could only go if she was gonna be babysitting and with Linda constantly. And then somebody else said, no, she just had enough and got up and left and went down there on her own. But apparently, I would believe that Randy knew because they said that Elizabeth was supposed to be staying with the Hogans and then had met someone there that lived in the building that had multiple apartments and had agreed with that person to take on one of the rooms, almost as though she wasn't coming back. And when Randy called Linda and Hulk to talk to Elizabeth and they didn't know where she was, he immediately got on a flight from Clearwater flew to Miami and showed up looking for her. When he couldn't find her, he forced Hulk Hogan to go out with him and they looked and they finally found her. And that was pretty much the end of the friendship between Macho Man and Hulk Hogan. Randy accused Hulk of help facilitating her to do these things and said she was no longer allowed to go anywhere. She wasn't allowed to come visit anymore because she had quote unquote lost her mind when she had the opportunity to do it. And a lot of people say he was just being very protective. He had promised her family that he would take care of her. In fact, when he had his feud with Jake the Snake Roberts and Jake slapped Elizabeth, when they came back to town, it was kayfabe. And uh, her family didn't know that that was part of a storyline. All they knew is when that Elizabeth and Randy showed up, Elizabeth's grandfather walked out front and said, you're not welcome in this house until you make right. You promised us when you married her that you would protect her and Randy wasn't allowed to come in until he beat Jake Roberts in the ring on TV. So eventually Miss Elizabeth had enough and she stepped away from wrestling, divorced Macho Man after all that. And then she married another man, a lawyer, became a salesman and didn't enjoy it, ended up wanting to go back to wrestling and called WCW. They decided since they had Macho Man there, even though the two weren't married, they thought it might be wise to have them together. They could work some sort of storyline out and Liz came back for a couple of years doing appearances with WCW. And then they paired her up in a storyline eventually with Lex Luger. Lex was married, Liz was married, and being around each other a lot they eventually fell in love and Elizabeth got a divorce from her husband and was living in an apartment in the same complex as Lex and they formed a somewhat of a habit of doing pills and drugs and drinking and Elizabeth decided no longer to do anything in wrestling and she was working the reception desk at the gym that Lex Luger and Sting owned together. And one day, the neighbors next to that apartment called the police because they heard shouting and screaming and what sounded like fighting. And when they came out, they saw Elizabeth with bruises around her eyes, cuts, and they believed that Lex Luger had abused her. So he was taken off to jail there. His excuse, I believe at the time he said in his book was that, uh, Elizabeth had been walking their two dogs and the two dogs had been horse playing and the leashes got crossed and she got hogtied and fell and that that's where they came from. But the police saw reason to be suspicious and they took Lex in, searched his home and found, I believe they said almost 2,000 pills and steroids and booked him with 17 felonies he paid for the release 
And one night while he and Elizabeth were watching movies, he said we were watching action movies and we had done our usual. We had uh, taken some pills, we were drinking vodka and watching a Schwarzenegger movie. And he said that some of her friends had told him, you know, it seems like she's starting to get a little clumsy. She's starting to get forgetful. Maybe you need to talk to her. Her, her habit is getting, she's doing more and more for the buzz and maybe she needs to stop. And he apparently had talked to her, but that night while they were watching movies, he realized that she was no longer breathing and made a frantic 911 call that's online. The paramedics came and rushed Elizabeth Hewlett to the hospital and she passed away. At the age of 42 years old. So it was almost like all the things that Randy Savage was terrified of and all the things he was paranoid about just wanting to make sure she was always okay and always taken care of, which he did. He he was part of the reason that she got that job again at WCW, but uh, in the end, it was her being involved with another wrestler to help facilitate her habit, a lot of people say. And he has to live with that guilt. He is, to his credit, Lex Luger has assumed full responsibility for everything his part in everything he's never shied away from his guilt in it and um i believe the charges and everything were dropped i don't think even after her death anything was pursued because there was uh there was no evidence that he had abused her nothing that they could prove and elizabeth said that it didn't happen so lex now at the time was one of the biggest wrestlers and i mean not only in stature, but they said he had the perfect look. He was supposed to be the next Hulk Hogan. Perfect body, perfect everything. Lex had some freak accident where he had worked out before taking a flight, and on the flight something happened and he, he almost was paralyzed and seized up. And now he looks completely different. He's confined to a wheelchair. So, he says he thinks about this all the time and never a day passes that he doesn't let himself remember that he was heavily responsible. Rest in peace, Miss Elizabeth. Just a... Uh, just goes to show how charming she was because she was by no means the first woman in wrestling, but she's the one that everyone gravitated towards. If you, if you doubt that, look up their wedding ceremony and look at the reactions to the fans in the crowd when the camera pans around. People are bawling. They're sobbing. They're crying. And I was really hoping to be able to find the address to the home that she grew up in because her and Macho Man were married there, but for the life of me, I have looked and looked and looked and couldn't find it, but I did try. And Elizabeth did have an education. She, before she met Macho Man, she had got a degree in communications. And I'm not going to do a whole big vlog on Daniel Boone. I just want to go visit the grave because this was all about Elizabeth today. All right, now I'll gladly follow your signs. Follow the yellow brick road. Okay, we're just gonna follow this stairwell down. Yeah, that's a pretty big one. Big centerpiece. The Frontiersman. Coonskin cap and all. I'm wondering how long till they decide to change this though. Here it says, born 1734, died 1820, entered Eastern Kentucky in 1767, explored bluegrass region from 1769 to 71, guided Transylvania Company, blazed wilderness trail, built Fort Boonesboro. I just didn't want to stumble over that one. 
1775, directed defense of the fort 1778, immigrated to Missouri 1799, reinterred with wife Rebecca in Frankfurt Cemetery in 1845. And here's the side with his name on it. A little more peaceful image of him up above as well. They have images on every side. And here's Rebecca's side. There's an image of her milking the cows. I don't know if that's really what you want to be remembered for, but hmm. All right, you definitely can't argue with the view they have, that's for sure. Well, my friends, we're going to call it a night. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you're a Daniel Boone or Miss Elizabeth fan, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you forgot about Miss Elizabeth, I hope this reminded you of how great she was and how lo lovable and likable she was. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you all next time from Ohio. Goodbye.